Uh, what's going on everybody? RetroWrench is back for another video. Today we have the Audi S3. We're going to be doing an appearance mod. As you can see we got the stock S3 grill here. I'm not a big fan on it so I'm going to change it. We actually just bought an RS3 front style grill. One it's a different color and a different pattern which I'll show you in a second. But yeah we got this grill from German Car Accessories. Um, I'll link it down below. It was a fair price. It's quality. It's not that eBay crap. But today we're just going to be a, an in-depth tutorial on how to do this. It's fairly simple. You only need a few tools, which I'll label all. But um, let's just jump right into it. We'll show you what we got, and we'll start tearing it down. So we just unboxed it. This is the grill. As you can see, completely different pattern. It's almost like a honeycomb. It utilizes the same chrome on the outside, and then the chrome on the emblem, and then chrome on the quattro, which is a new feature. Um, this is, like I said, the RS3. It just emphasizes that it is an all-wheel drive car. It has the same color silver. And then up here is actually a gloss black to match the, the honeycomb. And on the OEM one that I have over there, I'll show you, is actually this color. So I went ahead and put the emblem in. They do give you the backing for behind the emblem. So it would kind of be, let's see if I can show you. Kind of be like that. So I'm gonna keep it like this for now, and when we put it on the car, I'll see what's behind it. If it's just like the intercooler, I'm gonna keep it open. Just I don't wanna really use this. If I have to, if something's ugly behind it, I'm gonna use this to kind of block that away. They give you screws, more screws, the RS3 badge. I am not gonna put that on. I'm gonna actually take off the S3 badge and put it on here. And then you have, you have the sensors, which you should. Um, like the parking sensors, you'll utilize those same holes there. And if you don't, you could always put these little block offs there. It is technically for a Euro style, so you do have the hole for the Euro style plate here. I'm probably going to end up notching those out if it's too noticeable. If not, I'm just going to let it be. I'm not even going to be rocking a front plate here. But uh, yeah, we're going to start tearing that down. I just want to get right into it, so let's do it. All right, so. Before we get into it, I'm just going to mention, you're going to need some Torx bits. You got a T25 and a T30. The T30 is actually going to be these three up here, which we'll do last. And then the T25 is going to be the ones in the wheel well. And then they're the ones on the bottom of the bumper that are connecting to like the belly pan. So yeah, it's pretty much just going to be those two sockets, little Torx sockets. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll go over here now. We'll start on this side first. And it looks like there's one, two, three, four, four that I can see right now, T25 little um, screws that are connecting the fender liner into the bumper. We're gonna take those out of the way. And I'll show you what one of them look like. They're like these little guys. Typical German um, Volkswagen Audi part. On my Mark V, the same thing. And if you're having trouble getting in here, you could just rotate the, the wheels accordingly or you could take them off completely, but it's not necessary. I could fit a whole ratchet and everything in there without, it, without any issues. So I got the four out. I'm going to put them in my tray and I'm going to start maneuvering the, um, the fender liner out of the way with like a flathead or a pry bar. Along with those four screws, the T25s, you have two little push clips that you could put a uh, flathead in there and just pry it out. And we'll get those out of the way, or you could use a panel popper tool. And we'll do that now, and then this should give access to move this kind of fender liner out a little bit. It's not going to move it all the way out because you have bolts all the way around it, but it will give you access to see the inside of the bumper. So we made our way under the car. We got the ones on the driver's side fender lining along with the push clips. We got them out of the way. Now there's a bunch of, like I said, they're going to be T25s, and they're just under the bottom here those two and then they actually go around throughout the whole bottom of the uh, car so it'll be attached to this belly pan here and then attached to up here now we're just going to remove all those get them out of the way and then we'll take off the passenger side ones in the fender liner and then up top and this thing will be ready to come out so let's get right into it We got all the ones off on the bottom. Now there's only two left on this side and they're on the back side, the inside of the fender lining. So all those bolts are removed. So I have to pull it out of the way. There's one like right around here. 
on the inside, so you have to get a really long extension, and it will be like right there. It's gonna be nearly impossible to show you, but if you pop this fender liner over, you go through there, and it's, it's impossible to show you, but it's straight back, and we'll get that one out, and then there's just one right here, if you come on this side, Wes, right where my finger is, and that one comes off, and that will drop it down as well, but this one, we're gonna go way in through here. I need to get my light. It's like a dark abyss in there. So the one that's over here that we couldn't show you is out. And then I just took this one out. As you can see, it's a little different style. It's not pointed. It's flat on the top or the bottom. And that released this. So now it can pop out to the side. And that's just more of a popping game. I'm going to leave it like that because I still got to take these bolts off. And then that side. I'm not going to show you that side because it's pretty much the same procedure. Um, just opposite. And then we'll get it off and we'll, get, we'll show you that. Both sides of the bumper are loose. Now, I went ahead off camera and took out two of these. It is the T30, like I said. And this one should be loose enough to get by hand, but we'll take that off. Try not to mix up your hardware. They are different sizes and stuff. So we have our top three T30s up top. These are bottom of the car, and then our fender liners and all that is over there. But this thing should be ready to go. You want to be careful, especially because they have Mine is equipped with headlight washers and of course the parking assist so you don't want to pull the wires out too taut and make sure you have a blanket. I'll link that down below. These are cheap. They're good to have and they're pretty much multi-purpose but you don't want to scratch anything so we'll just let that lay on that. Okay, I'm not going to fool with it yet. I'm going to unplug down here so the headlight washer fluid, the whole line right here. It's really taut, so I don't want to pull that out too much. So I'm going to probably just kind of take it out of that little clip there. And, of course, it goes all the way to that side. So I'm kind of just going to leave it here until I figure out what I want to do. So we'll get back to you in a second. So on the driver's side, there's a little harness right here that connects down here. It looks like it's a, sort of a power supply for the parking uh, sensor. We unclipped that, which gave it a lot more room. And then as you can see, this is the harness or the tube for the uh, headlight washers. We just kind of unclipped them out of their little housing and gave us some room. I'm not going to unclip that completely. Yes, you could unscrew it and pull it out. But there's no sense to because all we need to access is right here. There's one, two, three, four. Four little same things, T25 screws. And this grill will pop out. There's some tabs we got to maneuver out of. but. It's pretty straightforward. I am going to get all these leaves out while I'm here. I suggest doing the same thing. Get like a leaf blower or if you have an air compressor, just blow them all out because you don't need anything interfering with airflow and possibly, you know, sometimes dry leaves get on hot contact, hot surfaces and could create fire. So we're going to take this grill off now. T25. And I want to stress, I'm sure you guys already know this, but just be extremely careful. Everything is so flimsy. It's cheap plastic. Oh, not cheap plastic. Well, yeah, it's cheap plastic. Alright, so those are the four that are holding it in. Now there's just a bunch of tabs. And of course, we gotta get the little parking sensors out. Kind of pry up on the tabs here. Oh, this is so nerve wracking. You know what? Let's unclip it first. Get out of the way. So there is two more uh, T25 screws that are kind of blending in. There's one right here, inside over here. I get them out. And this thing should kind of pop out. There's some tabs that we just gotta break loose, but it's gonna be tough. So this is the tricky part. As you can see, there's so many little tabs that look like it makes sense for them to, you know, remove them to get the grill off. But if you just try and picture this, the grill all comes off as an assembly. Yeah, we got all the wires out of the way, which like from here and down. So you just gotta keep that in mind. There's gonna be one tab, anything that has blue or whatever color your body is, those are the tabs you're gonna to wanna to remove. In our case, the car is Sepang blue, so there's a blue there, blue there, blue there, blue there, so on and so forth. And then up here, we have one, two, three, and four. You kinda of just gotta see how the grill kinda of has a tab like that. Once you push the blue out of the way, 
it will free it up and then you have to pop it up but be careful because these things just want to break in total there's 16 tabs around the car we went ahead and did this side already as you can see it doesn't give it that much play but it's a start this one's still caught so we get this one out of the way use a flathead anything that's kind of just flat and it'll just make life easier but you just got to be extremely careful this plastic is so brittle and I'm sure this grill is not cheap or like the whole bumper if you break any of these tabs unfortunately that means you know you might have to replace a bumper unless you got a plastic welder or some kind of ingenuity yeah let's start just taking these things off As you can see, we got that grill out. It's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Battling the tabs and battling the plastic and just the you know the brittleness of it, it was tough. But there's a total of nine screws. There's three on the bottom, right here, which are smaller, same size socket, but just smaller screws. I'll show you what I mean by that. That, and then the rest are along the sides, and you just got to really pry up on the tabs like these are the main ones holding you know the top half of it these are just guiders they're not really tabs and the last tabs are down here you know prying them out it was tough but hopefully we showed it you know showed the difficulty and are trying to be as transparent with you guys as possible now we're just going to take off the sensors transfer them onto the new grill and then it's just the you know reverse procedure put them on Unfortunately, I don't know if we'll be able to use the stock S3 emblem because you can see it has a different style clip. That one doesn't even offer that clip. Might have to get one on eBay or you know Amazon or go to some kind of dealer. Before we get into installing the grill, why it's off, just clean up everything. We took the air compressor and just blew out all the, the leaves. It's a peace of mind, not that you really see it, but I am gonna you know clean up the inside, just make it look nicer so I don't have to have that in the back of my head saying damn I should clean it while I was off but you don't have to do this this isn't part of the installation so we're not really going to film this but just wanted to let you guys know all right so as you can see we got both grills side by side like I mentioned before it utilizes the same chrome 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 and then just the pattern I think is going to just be so drastic to the front end it's really going to wake up this car make it look a little more aggressive this kind of looked like a more of a mom and pop car and the generic audi you know every audi the q5s all this are rocking the same style i want something more aggressive so the last thing we got to do is just transfer over the sensors they do give us these actually i thought they were a little block off plates but they're to change the color because as you can see this is gray now they'll be black so it will just kind of mesh together rather than have gray and then this little black so I'll just flip this over just kind of gotta pry them out that's that one uh, we're gonna clean it up just so it has you know because even sometimes grass gets on there and it'll interfere with the sensor it's weird they're very sensitive because it is a sensor huh I'm not to look into that but I'm pretty sure we have to remove something okay we'll go to this side now we got the sensors in the only downside I think about these sensors is they're supposed to face the outer way but the way these little tabs are it doesn't let you face it that way so I'm just hoping the wire should reach but some of these tabs are supposed to lock in and certain things they won't lock in so we're gonna have to figure that out but it's not the biggest problem but yeah, now we're kind of just gonna snap it all back into place hopefully without breaking anything let's do the bottom first and then we'll work our way up so we don't really want to bore you guys uh, this is pretty much gonna be a reverse procedure it's pretty much just putting all the tabs back in putting the hoses in or, and just wiring it all up as you can see like I said it is the opposite way so this won't reach where it normally was sitting it was sitting like over here but it is what it is I don't know if that's a design flaw or it's intended to be that way but start putting it back together we'll do some cinematics and we'll see you once it's on the car mm -hmm. 